And Burke is a hybrid. You know, Burke does a little bit of everything. He sees the floor. He can score a little bit. I just don't love small point guards who aren't elite athletes. Uh, you know, that combination of those two together scare me a little bit about Trey Burke. If he was a little bit quicker or a little bit taller, he would clearly be the number one pick in the draft. But when you start going back and look at those database points, it's a little scary to find a six-foot point guard who doesn't move that well laterally. And that's what scares me about him. Yeah. I, I'm a Trey Burke guy, and I think the best thing that could happen to him in this draft is him going five spots later than he thinks he's going to go. Because he already has a chip on his shoulder. He, he talked does. about it when we interviewed him. And I think he's getting mad this past week because initially people were talking about, oh, he might go number two. Oh, you could see him go fourth. Now he's starting to slide out of that. He's out of the top six. Now you're talking about Michael Carter Williams might go ahead of him. McCollum might go ahead of him. He might slip to 11 or 12. And if that happens, I think that would be the best thing that ever happened to that guy. I think he would be mad. I think he would play mad. I think he would do everything he could to shove it in people's faces. My my fear with him isn't a basketball thing. Um, I worry about the way he plays and him getting hurt. And I said this to him when we interviewed him. Um, I thought he took really hard falls. Every time I watch Michigan, and we, we would always have them on because we're always doing basketball shows, and Jalen's a Michigan fan, obviously. Um, I just thought he took hard falls. He bounces off people in not the right way. Like, uh, you know, somebody like Chris Paul would bounce off somebody, but he keeps his balance, especially big guys when you're in the paint. Trey Burke would bounce off a power forward. He would go flying. Like, he'd go into the cameras. And uh, I just, I worry about that with him. But it, it, I forget who's picking, like, uh, like the a team like the Sixers. Or, like, think about, like, Trey Burke going to the Thunder at number 12. Now, that would be interesting. It a pissed off Trey Burke. As a, as a backup, who's pretty good, probably underrated. But, yeah, uh, look, Utah would be maybe his dream scenario in that he might start. And when you look at all those young players around him, uh, uh, you know, I think he'd be a good fit there. And they want their point guards to shoot the basketball in Utah. That's a big, big deal for them. Mm. And I think Burke can do that. I, I love Burke, but I will say this. The thing that scares me a little bit about Burke, uh, in addition to what I said, there's a history of guys who rise in March. Yep. Uh, based off of team success combined with individual success. And it almost never looks good. He was ranked by NBA guys as a mid-first round to late first round pick the entire year until the end when – you know, he led Michigan to the championship game. Go back, watch the game. Obviously, he ripped my heart out by uh, beating Kansas with a huge, you know, a huge shot that won that game. Uh, but, you know, go watch the Syracuse game and, you know, other games. You know, Trey Burke wasn't dominant in the NCAA tournament. Right. Uh, he had several very difficult games um, there. But Michigan was winning. Burke has moxie. He has that. He has that charisma on the court. But I love in a point guard, you know, that I'm the best guy on the floor. I'm the leader. He has that about him, and his stock went through the roof. And <laughs> and I, I, I worry when I go back and look at my big boards and I watch guys who take huge leaps in March. That it's it's usually not pretty. The interview process will really help him. <laughs> 